Hi guys, welcome back to my vlog channel. Welcome to another vlog. It's Saturday today, so I am in a really good mood. I'm in a very relaxed mood, and it has officially become hot enough for me to contemplate just taking scissors and cutting off all of my hair. I'm not going to do it, but I'm having a strong pull towards doing it many, many times a day. I can just take a second to tie my hair so that I don't go insane and then we can continue talking you know uh, so the first thing I want to do today is show you some new beauty products I got in PR uh, but we are going to be doing a lot of fun stuff today and I have an IKEA haul I have to unbox it so that is fun except that this might be the most boring of all of my IKEA hauls because all I bought are like plastic storage dabbas that's it you know I have not really bought a lot of different things but i needed this plastic storage to bus and then i'm also going to show you a few of my pottery tools uh, that i've bought so that i can practice pottery and make ceramic things at home i can't do the whole process at home i will need to go out uh, uh, to fire the pieces to put them in a kiln but you know i can build and i can construct at home so that is what i'm looking forward to doing and i always put timestamps i make these chapters for my vlogs so in case you're only interested in seeing a specific part of the vlog that's perfectly fine you know so you can just um, jump to that specific section by checking out the timestamps now let's go towards the beauty unboxing bit just this morning i got some new products from Paula's Choice which is actually one of my favorite skincare brands and I have a whole vlog on this channel I'm going to link it over there from when Paula's Choice launched in India so they are an American skincare company founded by Paula Begun that's totally science based and hearing their founder talk is so inspiring uh, because she's extremely knowledgeable and uh, she's really fun to listen to and she's totally no nonsense she busts a lot of myths and all of that so her skincare products are very potent they are like focused on specific ingredients and are known to be really effective so i've tried her bha chemical exfoliation thing i have used the azelaic acid boost which i love and now the two new things that i got today the first is this c25 super booster so this is really really small size um 25 percent vitamin c booster so if you want to get like a super shot of vitamin c into your skin then this is something that you guys should look at and the next thing that i have here is the intensive wrinkle repair retinol serum i've actually never tried retinols until now it's a really potent anti-aging ingredient but also when you start using it you have to take like certain precautions and um, also if you're pregnant and stuff i think you can't use retinol so there are um, a few things about retinol that you should read up if you want to start using it and it's becoming a more mainstream ingredient i have seen more popular brands like ole has retinols now but earlier it was one of those like sciencey ingredients that only the really fancy brands would do but as per usual more brands are picking up on it and all i haven't decided whether i'm ready for retinol yet but i'm going to spend some time and do some research on it and the next thing that i have to show you guys is hair care that's curly hair specific it's from b plant so i was really excited that uh, indian brands are coming out with curly hair ranges now because we had very very few indian brands are realizing there is like a wavy and curly community so you know they're starting to cater to us which is nice so here i just have some random accessories there is a satin scrunchie a satin hair bonnet you can put this on your hair at night and sleep in it to try and preserve your curls i've never done that because weather in mumbai can be pretty hot and stuff i usually pineapple right i tie my hair on top to protect my curls so this is another way to do it and i didn't own a bonnet till now so i'm kind of excited uh, that i got this so that i can you know start uh, trying out this method and i think this is a satin pillow cover also something that's supposed to be really good for your hair as well as your skin i use cotton currently which is good for health but it may not be the best for hair at all so i'm gonna give this one a try these are the products itself 
So this is the curly hair shampoo and this is the conditioner. This thing here, the curl defining leave-in cream, this is something that they already have. They had it from their launch only I think and I've tried it before, I've used it, it's nice. This is something also that's new and this is a curly hair pre-poo. Um, so pre-poo sounds so funny but the name just means you use it before your shampoo. So pre-shampoo, pre-poo. And this is especially useful if you have a like tighter curl pattern than mine. Like my hair is wavy but if you have really curly hair and you don't comb it in between your washes at all then you put this on before you shampoo this will help you detangle and comb your hair because you shouldn't comb it when it's totally dry so this is something that's quite uh, runny almost like a gel and it has coconut water and aloe vera no parabens no sulfates and it also protects hair color if you have hair color on so i'm really looking forward uh, to trying out this range and I hope that it works well for me. So I'm really excited about uh, trying out these new products because I don't do as much active like beauty blogging as I used to. And I was never into like doing makeup looks or anything too elaborate or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But actually testing beauty products is one of my favorite things to do. I published a couple of product reviews on my main channel in March. That is where I really nerd out and I love you know really trying things and giving you guys that information and possibly helping you with your purchasing decisions i think we can move on to opening the ikea stuff so this is today's ikea box which you're going to open uh, but really this is pretty light because as i mentioned it's just majority plastic dabbas that i needed So I just managed to get the box open and I'm actually really impressed recently with the fact that IKEA uses almost no plastic in any of their padding and packaging because they do need to pad these boxes because sometimes the things are fragile and you know the Korea guys don't handle them so well so they could break but they mostly just use cardboard and also a recycled paper which is really very nice. So here is one box that I bought called the Gliss. It is a pretty standard plastic box with a bit of dividers inside. So you can use this for anything that you need to organize. I think it can be used for jewelry and I'm actually going to be using that for small tools. And if you notice one little detail, it's at the bottom has these four feet and there are like these depressions for four feet on top also and that just means that you can pile them very nicely uh, most of ikea's boxes work like this that if you buy boxes from the same range they pile in a very seamless manner and now almost all of the other boxes i bought are from the samla range now this is the smallest box and i have one of these or a few of these already but i just needed more these are one of ikea's most affordable plastic dabba range and they don't look so fancy uh, but they're nice really and they're useful for holding a lot of things i bought these now to keep some of my pottery supplies and i got really excited because in some of the pictures on the website itself they have used a pottery studio as like an example of where these things would be useful so when i saw that i was like okay here are two big boxes from the same samla range and you can buy these with or without lids but i feel like most people would want lids with these boxes so these are two boxes but these are four lids because there are a few more on this side these, these are challenging to show you guys right now because I'm in a small space and these boxes are rather bulky but these are two of the larger size boxes and then I showed you guys that I had four lids because these are the same like breadth as these larger boxes but as you can see they're pretty short but they pile on those large boxes exactly the same and even the lids that I used are exactly the same. So that's something that's nice. I bought these shallow boxes uh, because you know when I create any items of pottery I will have to take them into a studio to get them fired 
the four day of fire they're actually extremely brittle they can break so easily so mostly you need these like broad dabbas or crates to take them in really carefully and they kind of can't touch each other so i will just line these with some paper or something and place the items over here it seems like a good idea now i'll actually have to try it and see whether it's really a good idea or what one of the final storage thingies is this now this is not a box in itself this is an insert that goes into one of these larger boxes oh it looks so nice and it divides the larger box so you can keep some things in the bottom and you can keep some things in here and then when you open the box you can just pick this up you know So the only thing that I purchased that is not a storage dabba is this Lil Halt USB C cable. I need a lot of USB C cables because majority of my main devices run on USB C. So my Google Pixel does, my Apple iPad does. It's becoming more of the standard cable that's replacing micro USB I think for a lot of things. And earlier I used to buy Amazon Basics cables because they were also really good quality. and then i randomly tried the ikea cable once and it blew me away it's so good and i think it's about the same cost as the amazon basics cables but these are so well made they are fabric wrapped and they last a really long time because i'm not someone who handles my cables very carefully <laughs> uh, so they do get spoiled quickly with me and this has been going strong for a really long time so i bought another one is available in a bunch of colors but i really like this olive green thing so this is a closer look into the gliss box it is this nice frosted plastic and also one of the cool things about this particular box is that it's made in india because ikea sources things from all over the world so you will get a lot of things made in china a lot of things made in random european countries and they make many things in india as well especially the textiles and fabrics are usually made here because we have a lot of fabric manufacturing in the country but i didn't think we had too much of a plastic industry so it's really cool that you know uh, this box is made here and now that i've seen it and that i like it if i have a need for more i'll buy more in the future usually the first order i buy like single ones and then if i like the storage system i will buy more of them later on now that the unboxing is done i'm going to turn the camera around and you guys are going to see a little bit of my home pottery studio hi again guys and welcome to my little home pottery studio so if you didn't figure out already by the frame this is just exactly opposite to the place i usually sit this is the other half of my window and no jokes i actually realized that this is the perfect place for me to practice pottery because it works at every level there is a lot of nice light coming in during the daytime there's a little bit of like sun coming in not directly but sun is actually really great there are some parts where i need more ventilation where the space can be more enclosed and that time i can just open up a window and also all of the surfaces here are easily wipeable in case i make a mess with you know really wet clay or something so it's just perfect and i basically have all of my tools around me which i'm going to start putting away in boxes so during that time i think i can talk to you guys because i know that at least some of you all are interested in learning pottery i've been getting some questions about it like what is the class like and did i enjoy it do i think it's worth it and continuing which is a really complicated answer i think because you guys know i have gushed so much about that class i really enjoyed it but it is a difficult hobby to take up i think because of how expensive it can be studio pottery on the whole is really expensive and we undervalue pottery as a profession in india because it is usually practiced by a lot of marginalized people and we don't really give that much value to their labor which is really really sad and shitty of course but you know when it comes to studio pottery clay is the cheapest thing and everything else is really expensive 
tools even are not that expensive but then you need to purchase clays you need to fire all of that can add up so much if you want to buy a pottery wheel a decent pottery wheel will start at around 25,000 I'm gonna be hand building so I don't really have any plans to get a wheel and then if uh, you want to use a kiln you either have to find a community studio which will allow you to fire your pottery and I believe I found one so that is exciting and uh, I will definitely be going that route in the next month or so but if you want to buy your own kiln the literal cheapest kiln that you can get is like around 80,000 and the decent ones are like 1.2 lakh and all so it's very expensive as a hobby and we don't have so many community studios here in India now I know that I'm not going to be doing this as a profession or anything but I also know that I want to continue playing with it now and then and even just to do that I've had to spend a lot on supplies now that I took the class I kind of know what I would need and so I started buying the things <laughs> and I was kind of shocked at what like all of it was costing but then I tried to put it into perspective of anything else I would buy like if I was spending eight ten thousand on a new bag or like a nice pair of shoes or something like that I wouldn't think so much about it so what is the problem with spending that much on hobby supplies now that I have these things most of these things are going to be like I can use and now that I have bought the things I'm going to be able to use most of them for quite a long time and I can just keep buying clay as and when I need it so the tools that I purchased are from all over very few of the common things I've bought from Amazon but most of the other things I've had to buy from specialty websites there are a few pottery focused websites in India so I've had to buy from those places this is the clay that I use this is mid to high fire white stoneware clay and as long as this is properly glazed this is all food safe because if you make functional wear like mugs or plates or something you need to make sure that it's food safe if I do things right it is also going to be microwave safe dishwasher, dishwasher safe and everything although honestly if you want to prolong the use of these things you should avoid using a microwave you should avoid using a dishwasher and then your things will stay good for longer but I actually spent more to buy these small 1 kg bags instead of buying one 12 kg bag so that it's easier to handle and I have 12 1 kg bags of clay which should last me for quite a while considering that I'm not going to be making really big pieces you know and here are some more of the tools that I use a lot of these tools that you see in here this like wooden spatula type thing this is a cutting wire a wooden rib a metal rib and these couple of sculpting tools a knife etc so these are the basic tools that you need if you want to start playing with the clay at home and these are quite affordable you'll get all of these things in a kit on amazon and stuff for around like 400 to 500 rupees so this is your starting point these are really versatile tools that you can use for many different purposes the quality of these is not the best they are enough to get started also this sponge is really important and it's part of this starters toolkit only these things also i bought from amazon and I, I didn't need all of them i actually only needed this but the other things also seemed kind of useful so these are like sculpting tools and if you're going to be doing detailed work on clay uh, these things are really helpful so these are like rubber tip or silicon tip brushes that will help you with fine sculpting these are small two-sided ball tools that will also help with sculpting so you can see there are these tiny like balls at the end so again if you want to make small details on a figure like you want to carve eyes or nose these kind of tools are going to help you do that and these are bigger size modeling ball tools and you can even use these for other mediums like fondant and stuff again i don't really know where i'm going to use these big ball tools but 
I got these three in a combo for a really good price and I figured you know why not get the whole thing because it's probably going to be useful. I also bought this. This is really random but these are letters. These are plastic letters that you can use to make impressions on clay if you want to write stuff. I bought metal letters as well as plastic letters. These plastic letters were supposed to be for cookies and I thought oh I'm going to keep the metal ones but I want to see which ones work better. And these plastic ones while being like much cheaper or actually much better because the letter shapes are really deep here and on the metal ones they were really shallow so I returned the metal ones and I kept these then I have also bought stainless steel ruler <laughs> which reminded me of school days you won't believe it you guys just three four months ago I found my geometry box from my school days and I gave it away because I was like I'm never going to need a geometry box again and now I need a geometry box again so I'm going to have to buy that and then I also had to buy some brushes these are random cheap brushes that I bought on Amazon you know I had bought them for another DIY project but they actually work for my pottery as well uh, to cover like the surface it works fine here are some more brushes from random Chinese brand also bought from Amazon these are fine detailer brushes so these are good if I want to make really fine uh, details with the underglaze and these are some bigger brushes from Montmartre and these are actually supposed to be for acrylic painting but they're gonna work for clay painting as well this was part of my beginners toolkit and this is a hake brush or a goat's hair brush this is specially for applying glaze on pottery this is kind of a more expensive specialty brush and these are also used in water coloring by the way so you guys have actually seen most of the tools that i use now this is all part of a couple of orders that just came in recently i bought some under glaze uh, from this brand in Chennai I think called Sara and this is a child pack of underglaze <laughs> these bottles are so tiny and they are like one third full you guys will not believe how expensive underglaze is but you know you can't paint on pottery with normal paint this looks different when you apply it and then when you actually fire it in the kiln it will look completely different so I'm kind of excited about that this is something called a slip trailer uh, which is a little bit hard to explain but you can do some kind of design work with this so this is the bottle and then it has these little needle tips over here these are brass hole punches in case i'm making something that needs to have a hole in it these will help me punch holes and then the only things that i have remaining in this box are a few glazes and under glazes most of the time when you're applying glaze for your pottery you can't apply it with a brush you need to dip it which is a huge headache so I bought specialty glazes I believe these are made in America and you can apply these with a brush so all of these are from this brand called Duncan and I've tried a lot of different colors and different finishes and I have some ideas for how to use them these I'll be able to use directly from the bottle but then when it comes to these under glazes I think I have to buy an artist palette also I gave away all of my art supplies from school and now I need to purchase them again so that feels you know weirdly ironic now I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time arranging these things in my new storage So that was it for my pottery studio tour and I know I keep doing air quotes whenever I say pottery studio just because like with a lot of things I have a lot of self doubt when it comes to this also what am I even doing is it practical and you know maybe all of my pieces will turn out really badly what is the point of it all <laughs> but then you know 
I just know that practicing pottery is something that made me so happy and I want to be able to continue it and I don't think we should be needing to like monetize or needing to justify all of our hobbies to be able to practice them we should just do something because we enjoy doing things and I enjoy doing this so I want to continue doing this if you guys follow me on Instagram you may have already seen uh, that I shared some Instagram stories on reclaiming clay so basically all of the clay that you use to build something can be recycled an unlimited number of times until you put it in the kiln which is the final stage so in case you're making something and it sort of breaks or you don't like it you can completely recycle that clay again and again so I had all of my scraps from class and I set them out on this canvas cloth here I put them to dry about this time yesterday so it's been about 24 hours this is the first time I'm reclaiming clay but it's quite an easy process our pottery teacher showed us how to do it and then I watched a YouTube video online also I think it's kind of ready for me to pick this up and put it back in with my bag of clay so I'll just move you guys and show you as well here's the clay which I started drawing yesterday and uh, this is my leftover clay from my pottery class I still have I think maybe a couple of kilos remaining this was originally a five kilo bag uh, so this should be ready to join that it's still a little wet it looks like really dirty and grey but once this is fired this is actually going to be white I'm not sure why I thought this would be ready because it kind of looked like it was somewhat dry but this is going to need another day at least it's still way too wet once it gets a little drier, I can add it back to that bag. My doorbell just rang and I got some pizza from this outlet called Moza Pizza. They are based in Worley but they were really kind to send me some pizzas even though I don't live that close by and they took a lot of trouble. So I have two pizzas from them so nice and the first one is called the OG. I believe this is vegetarian, it's got basil leaves and a few different types of cheeses and oh my god this smells so yummy that it's torture to show it to you guys and do not start digging in but let's see the other one this is the second one it's called the all american this is something that i picked and it has pepperoni on it because i really like pepperoni and it also has fresh jalapenos and mozzarella and some different types of cheeses and they both look really really nice thank you so much to moza pizza and we are definitely going to enjoy these right now so i did start with the og which was a very good place to start the crust is amazing it's not like a total thin crust pizza where you know the crust becomes really crispy like a biscuit i'm not a big fan but it's not a deep dish or a thick crust it's just that floppy in between and you can taste the sauce also which tastes really yummy and of course the toppings are nice it is just the right balance of everything so i thought i'll show you a little bit of a meal prep for actually tomorrow's meals not today uh, this is chicken breast which has been defrosting for a little bit and this is this Jude's Kafriel Masala which I had shown in a recent vlog. So the full packet of masala is supposed to be for one kilo of chicken. That's why we've already used half of it and now we're using the second half of it <laughs> for half a kilo of chicken. So the last time I'd marinated it for just a couple of hours and this time we decided that let's do a longer marination because it will take the flavors in so you just need to marinate it with this paste and mommy's going to chop this chicken and then we're going to mix it nicely keep it in the fridge and cook it tomorrow and it should be like really really yummy we also add a little bit of potatoes because that's customary for kafriyal and really tasty mm -hmm. 